Hey guys, Weeby News here, and today I'm going to be discussing the unused executions for Danganronpa Another One, and I'm going to be ranking them all from my least favorite to my favorite. All these scenarios were made by the actual creator of Danganronpa Another Lanouge, and the details regarding them can be found on his website in these character sheets that he made. They're all originally in Korean, but thankfully Toast Cat on Reddit translated all of them, so I'm going to be referencing their translation in this video. I'll be sure to link their post with the full profile translations below, but before we get into today's video, I'd like to thank our sponsor, Opera GX. Opera GX is a free web browser made specifically for gamers. I absolutely love this browser. It has so many great features that I truly can't live without anymore. One really cool feature they have is GX Profiles which lets you create custom profiles to better suit whatever online activity you're doing. For example, you can make a streaming profile so you can safely use it while broadcasting and not have to worry about showing your private information while live. Or if your computer's lagging a lot, you can make a potato quality GX profile that runs it at its most basic form. They also have a dark mode option for web pages, which I love so much because light mode is truly the bane of my existence. And it's so nice to have an option for that for websites that don't have a dark mode option yet. You can also customize your your home screen with Opera GX, either through customizing everything yourself or from choosing from Opera's themes and wallpapers. My favorites are their animated wallpapers. Whether you want an artsy background or a meme one, they really do have a wallpaper for everything. Opera has its own extension store, but it's also compatible with any Google Chrome extension as well. It's super easy. You can literally just download the extension from the Chrome store itself and it'll automatically add it to Opera. Opera GX is also available on mobile as well, and you can even connect it to your desktop version. Opera GX is completely free to install and you can download it using my link in the description or through the QR code on the screen. Once again, thanks to Opera GX for sponsoring this video. And yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into the video. Number 10 is Yuki Maeda's Execution Detention. If you know the original game, you should recognize from the title. It's the same execution from the original game. I think it's a good fit for somebody with no characteristics and is a fake personality like Maeda. Same as the original game, there is a table and a chair on a conveyor belt and Maida is sitting on there. At the back, the machine activates, making loud noises, and Maida is slowly moving towards it. Although he is the ultimate lucky student, there is nobody to stop the machine like the original game. Maida gets crushed under the machine and dies. So obviously, like it mentions in his description, this is the same execution used in Chapter 5 of Danganronpa 1 for Naegi and Kirigiri. And as much as I love that execution, I felt like I couldn't rank this one very high since creatively, I just feel like there's a lot more that Lanouche could do than just repeat an execution from one of the canon games. I do understand his vision in using it though. It does make sense that this fake Yuki would get an execution that doesn't reflect his personality at all since, you know, his personality doesn't exist. I do feel like Lanouge emphasized the last part about how no one showed up to save him like Alter Ego did for Nagi. I think that part of the execution is almost mocking Maida in a way. Like you're not a true ultimate lucky student like Nagi. If you were, then your talent would have saved you. And since it didn't, therefore you deserve to die. The weird thing though is that if you played through the game, you know that Yuki is not a fake lucky student by any means. He's actually Utsuro, the most overpowered lucky student to ever exist. And because of that, it's kind of weird to try to make an execution for Yuki in the first place, since you know that his extreme luck is just going to save him in the end. And I kind of feel like that might be why Lanouge just like opted out of making him one. I kind of wonder if the idea behind this was that this is an execution that Utsuro made just in case his luck failed him and he ended up being executed during like chapters one through five of the killing game. If that's the case, then that might be why Lanouge seemed to emphasize that Yuki's luck didn't save him in the end. Utsura relied on his luck to carry him and Akane safely through the killing game. So I feel like this execution is kind of symbolic as to how that luck failed him. And I feel like it's kind of a middle finger to be like, hey, look, Makoto went through this execution and hey, his luck saved him. Even he has better luck than you. Although I kind of like this concept, I was overall disappointed that Yuki didn't get an original execution. And that's why I ranked this the lowest. I feel like there's a lot you could do with a Yuki execution, especially if you decide to tap into what's revealed in the sixth chapter. Like he was so upset and traumatized when he realized he was actually the mastermind and that all of his memories were fake. I can't imagine the despair he felt from learning all of this. And that makes it like, the perfect source to theme an execution after. For an execution based off of this idea, I can imagine him seeing his mother and running to her, only to like face through her image and reveal she's just a hologram, emphasizing the idea that the most important person in his life doesn't actually exist. Then you could also play on his guilt of being Utsuro, like he can see the backs of the students who died in the killing game, but once he approaches them and they turn around, it reveals like a mangled and half-dead state, and then they could start to blame him for their deaths. 
I just feel like those ideas are like so chilling in comparison to this one, you know what I mean? And like I said, I get Lanouge's vision in using this, but overall I think I would have preferred something different. Number nine is Haru Kobashikawa's execution, Sally Forth, Deathcraft. The location is an aerial runway above the clouds. Kobushikawa is seated inside a one-seater plane, tied up. Monokuma lights a fire at the back, and like a bomb exploding, the plane starts to take off. But it flies extremely messy by bumping into towers. In dizziness, Kobushikawa opens his eyes to see the plane flying straight into a large bell tower and explode as the plane dives headfirst into it. With the explosion, the bell rings, and only some kind of debris floats in the air. I think we all know what kind of debris that is. Also, did he just crash into the Uehara bell tower? That was like my very first thought when I read this. I'm honestly like really curious if that was going to be an Easter egg for Super Danganronpa another two, if his execution was actually included. But yeah, getting back on topic, obviously this execution is meant to be ironic, since Haru is the ultimate pilot and Monokuma kills him in a plane crash. In his introduction, you learn that he's a genius pilot who's been flying planes since he was just five years old. On instinct alone, I might add. So it would have to be mental torture for him to be sitting in a crashing plane like this, tied up and unable to control it, when he knows that he could easily land it if his ties were broken. But otherwise, I kind of feel like Haru's talent isn't that relevant in the game, at least from what I remember. I feel like he's remembered a lot more for his goofy personality, his girl craziness, and his relationship with Satsuki. Even in his free time events, he doesn't really mention his talent. So overall, I think it would have been more impactful to make his execution connect to his past with Satsuki, rather than it being based on his talent. So in Chapter 4, when Monokuma shows him the pictures of him and Satsuki together, he states that although he still had no memories of them being together in the past, his emotions for her came back. So like, can you imagine the despair he'd feel if he saw those pictures for the first time during an execution? Like he sees them, finally remembers his feelings for her, and decides to run to her while the execution's still going on, but Monokuma stabs him just moments before they're able to touch. And Satsuki would be so horrified too and would completely fall into despair because she'd also see those pictures and have those feelings reappear just to lose him immediately right after. This almost seems like a fate worse than what actually happened in the game, since at least then they were able to discuss their feelings for a few moments before Haru's death, but here there's just no closure at all. But yeah, overall, I don't think this is a bad execution or anything, but for a character with as much emotional depth as Haru, I do feel like there could have been more interesting ideas that Lanouche could have worked with, which is why I ranked this at number 9. Next up is Kyoka Maki's execution, 666 points out of 10. Maki is tied up by a rope and standing on top of a shooting board. Some weird machine tentacles come down and mark each part of Maki's body with points. 10 on the head, 1 on both arms, legs, stomach, and chest. The Monokuma standing in front aims and shoots with a gun. The first bullet hits Maki's head, but it is a toy bullet that can stick to the body instead of a real bullet. The toy bullets start getting stuck on Maki's body and she is confused, and eventually her body is full of hundreds of toy bullets. The scoreboard comes down and the bomb inside of the toy bullets explode as the scoreboard shows 666 points. Maki's body disappears without a trace. So this execution is also meant to be ironic, having the ultimate sniper die while taking the place of a shooting range target, with even the number scores drawn on her and everything. In her introduction, it mentions that when it comes to shooting, Maki boasts a 100% accuracy rate. Regardless of what type of shooting it is, whether it be sniping, air gun, darts, slingshots, she always manages to hit the bullseye. This execution was already pretty ironic, with it just being based off of her talent, but Monokuma decides to add an extra layer of irony by shooting her all over with the toy bullets before exploding them so he can reach a score of 666 points out of 10. Like I said, Maki being the best, she always scores a 10 out of 10 when she's at a shooting range. So in this example, he's mocking her talent by achieving a greater score than she's ever done. Obviously, Monokuma rigged it, so that would be the case, but I do believe that's the goal he's trying to accomplish with this. Another important thing to note is that Maki was pretty uninterested in her talent. Whenever it's brought up to her, she just kind of brushes it off and tries to change the topic. The only thing that really seemed to excite her about her talent was the fact that it allowed her to enter her Hope Speak Academy. She even mentions that after she graduates, she wants to take the opportunity to travel the world and free herself from the world of rusty guns. I feel like it would be pretty awful for her to die to an execution so heavily themed around a talent she doesn't care about and wants to separate herself from. I feel like dying to this execution could make her feel like she'll only truly be remembered as the ultimate sniper. Overall, I do like this execution, but I do think it's weaker compared to the other ones I'm going to discuss. Granted, Maki doesn't have a detailed backstory to work with, so it is harder to make an execution for her that would really be as emotionally impactful as some of the other characters. 
And also it's kind of screwed up to say, but I kind of prefer the more like cruel executions, like the ones that make you like audibly gasp and shock and horror. And this one is honestly really tame compared to some of the ones coming up. So that's another reason why I ranked it a bit lower. Next up is Kazuna Tamori's execution, Play Play Victory Stadium. Tamori is tied to a turned off billboard and forced to cheer in a baseball stadium full of Monokumas. Tamori starts cheering with a pale blue face and the billboards on Tamori's both sides turn on every time time Tamori's cheering team scores a point. Every billboard has a Monokuma with a ridiculous pose, and every time the billboards turn on, they get electrocuted and explode, giving Tamori visual fear. The more Tamori cheers, the more Monokumas get hit, and the billboards get closer to the one Tamori is tied to. As that happens, Tamori manages to stop cheering out of fear and begins struggling to get out. But the last ball hits Tamori in the head, crushing it, and her billboard is turned on, declaring the ball as a home run. Tamori's body is fried by electricity as celebration fireworks are fired, and the words victory is spelled out in the sky. The stadium is filled with the Monokuma's cheers. It honestly like blows my mind that we were so close to getting this execution. Like this could have been her actual execution if she just managed to successfully kill Akane. But honestly, thank God Utsura's luck stepped in and saved Akane because that would have made the finale a lot more anticlimactic. Overall, I like this execution a decent bit. Obviously, it's themed around her talent as the ultimate cheerleader, but I also really like how over the top it is production-wise with all these different billboards lighting up and being destroyed. I feel like it fits Kazuna's big and bubbly personality. I also really enjoy how the tension builds up throughout it. Like she has to see all these Monokumas on billboards doing over-the-top poses, mocking her talent, and then she sees them get fried one after the other, obviously hinting at her fate. And like just reading through this execution, I can just feel her anxiety rising as each billboard explodes and the explosions get closer and closer to her. Another interesting thing to note about this execution is that one of the critical parts of her death is a strike to the head from a baseball. I think this could be referencing Leon's execution since this execution takes place in a baseball stadium and his talent was the ultimate baseball player. Many people speculate that the critical blow that killed Leon during his execution was a strike to the head as well, based on the fact that this is the last shot you see of him alive. I feel like this is a pretty cool little reference if that was intentional. The crowd cheering after her death with the fireworks in the sky too. It's just like so unsettling to me. I always enjoy when they take events that are meant to be like celebratory and turn them into executions. It just makes them feel extra creepy. So yeah, overall, I really like this execution. I do think it would have been interesting if they included references to her backstory too since um, her backstory is very unique to put it lightly. Like, I think it would have been cool to see references to the people she's used and wronged in the past and kind of use that against her in an execution. But overall, I still think this is a pretty solid execution regardless. Next up is Kakaru Yamaguchi's execution, Reverse Trial. Yamaguchi is tied up on top of a wooden stool. Nothing is visible because it's dark around, but the lights come on and show that it is a courtroom. The defendant Monokuma shows up, then the prosecutor Monokuma and the attorney Monokuma argue back and forth for a bit. But the imprisonment is decided and the judge Monokuma slams his gavel down. Yamaguchi, trembling in unrest, gets hit with a gavel three times his size. Suddenly, the trial fast forwards and defendant Monokumas come in rapidly, and the prosecutor Monokuma convicts all of them. Yamaguchi gets hit by the gavel for every Monokuma defendant that's convicted. The courtroom is filled with his blood and dust, and when the dust is gone, only a gavel remains, with no sign of Yamaguchi. I love this execution almost solely for the fact that I imagine this all taking place in the Ace Attorney courtroom. I feel like with this execution, you could add so many fun references to the Ace Attorney games. And since Danganronpa does seem to be pretty heavily inspired by those games, I think it'd be really awesome to see a big tribute to it in an execution, which I'd say are arguably the most iconic and memorable scenes in Danganronpa. The execution specifies that the gavel is three times the size of Yamaguchi, so I wonder if they made it so comically large to emphasize Kakaru's insecurities regarding his large, gangster-like appearance. I also think it's really interesting that he gets beaten to death for the crimes committed by the defendant Monokumas coming into the court. It sort of mirrors something that Lanouge wrote in his character sheet. His sister Midori is in extremely poor health and is the complete opposite of Kakaru in that regard, who can stay fit without even trying. Because of this, Kakaru blames himself for her poor health thinking that he was the one who took it all away. Obviously, this is untrue, but he seems to blame himself for it regardless. This reminds me of his execution, 
sent in the character sheet he's blaming himself for something he didn't do, and in the same way the court is punishing him for crimes he didn't commit. So I feel like this execution symbolizes his self-hatred that he can't seem to overcome. And I feel like that's a really unique and creative idea to include. It's honestly a shame that the game didn't really touch on his relationship with Midori much, or these insecurities. He really is such an interesting concept, and I hate that he didn't get more screen time. Evil Anuj mentions in Kakari's character sheet that he regrets not fleshing him out more. Next up is Kanata and Nori's execution, Operation Venus. Inori's neck gets chained and forced onto an ambulance with the Monokuma head painted on. The ambulance rushes through the road, breaking into the hospital entrance, and crashes into an operating room. Inori is laid onto the operating table. The Monokumas in operating clothes holding scalpels come towards Inori, and the screen darkens as the curtains close. The curtain is dyed in blood with a terrifying noise, and when the curtain is opened, Inori is nowhere to be seen and only a bloody statue of Venus. No, a statue of Monokuma exists in her place. I'm assuming it's referring to the Venus de Milo statue, since it's the most famous statue of Venus, and the fact that it's famously missing its arms also goes with the theme of this execution too. Of course, this one instead is Monokuma themed and made out of her innards. Ew, I know it's so gross, dude. It is so disgusting. I'm so glad this execution got cut. Just for the fact that I don't have to be traumatized by this image. Lanouge was really like, sure, Inori had the most gruesome death canonically in the game. So what can I do to make it even worse? Like, it's pretty bad when this is the better option. Like, what does Lanouge have against this girl? But back on topic, I did rank this execution pretty high because it does complement her talent and her backstory quite well, in my opinion. It's revealed in her free time events that she and her parents were in a terrible car accident when she was young. They lost their life due to this, and she almost died as well. But Ando Hikaru performed a life-saving surgery on her when no other doctor would. He felt sympathetic to her situation and adopted her. After this, he became Inori's savior and role model, and this inspired her to follow his footsteps steps and become a surgeon too. I can imagine that her execution would remind her a lot of this tragic situation that happened to her. For example, the ambulance she's thrown into crashes into a hospital, and this would likely trigger her memories of her parents dying from that fatal car accident. And then, just like in that event, she's taken to an emergency room and surgery is performed on her. And this would of course remind her of how her adoptive father saved her life. But this time around, her savior is replaced by Monokuma, mocking their profession and killing her in the process. I'm not sure exactly what the significance of the Venus statue is. Venus is the Roman goddess of love and beauty. So my guess is that Monokuma's surgery turned her into Venus because converting her into a symbol of beauty is like fixing her in a demented way. That or it could be the idea that she's too far gone to save. Like what the other doctors said about her state in the first accident that she talks about in her free time events. So, you know, we might as well turn her into something useful. Decor. But let me know what you guys think about this. Another important fact to note regarding this execution is that in her character sheet, Lanouge admitted that he originally planned on making Inori Chapter 2's culprit, and there was actually going to be a twist that revealed she was hiding a dark and psychotic side to her. Because of this, it seems like there was a pretty good chance that this execution was developed while he thought that she would have this characterization, which I think is a pretty interesting thing to think about. It kind of does make me wonder if there might be actual like concept art for this execution that we haven't seen. Next up is Surugi Kenjo's execution, Prison Break. Kinjo gets handcuffed and arrested for murder, with police cars surrounding him. Kinjo, locked in a cell, notices that the floor has an unidentifiable map, and figures out that it is the prison's map. Deciding that he can't die like this here, Kinjo attempts a prison break by digging a hole with a spoon, and commits extra crime in the process, such as keeping a warden Monokuma hostage or stealing a gun and threatening them. After succeeding in breaking out, Kinjo steals a police car and attempts to drive out, but the car had its brakes broken and unable to stop except accelerates. It crashes into a Monokuma-shaped police station and explodes with the building. Kinjo dies as a criminal to the end. This execution is super cool to me. I love how it plays on his corrupt black and white sense of justice. Like this execution is just so perfect for a scenario where he is a culprit. In the game, he was so quick to call other characters selfish and criminals, even telling Akane to commit sewer slide for her sins. But in this scenario, he was willing to kill somebody and likely even willing to try to trick the other students 
during the trial to save himself, and this goes completely against his proclaimed principles. So it'd be really interesting to see him have like a mental breakdown trying to justify it, and it would be so satisfying to see Ray or the others calling him out on his hypocrisy. Like, remember that scene after the third trial when Uihara calls out Kenjo by asking why he's so upset considering that he used the same logic that Kenjo does. I feel like it would be similar to that, except times a thousand. And this execution is just perfect for a scenario like this as well, since it forces him to keep committing crimes in order to save himself, so he has to continue that hypocrisy that got him there. I think it'd be really cool if the execution really emphasizes his ultimate fear of being a criminal too at the end. So for example, after he crashes and is slowly dying from blood loss, a wanted criminal poster featuring his face can fall on top of him. So in his last last moments, he realizes that according to his own beliefs, he's nothing but a dirty criminal. I really do like this execution, but I genuinely feel like Kenjo's fate in the actual game is worse, which is why I decided to rank it a bit lower than I originally intended when I was making this list. Lanou states in Kenjo's character sheet that he fell into such a great despair in Chapter 6 because his father, who Kenjo earned his strong sense of justice from, completely gave it up for despair. Lanou states, Kenjo had all his reasons for being who he is destroyed. It was not just feeling betrayed, his entire identity was gone. The ideals he got from his father, the father that taught him those ideals, gave up on being a human being. Learning that his father, who taught him these beliefs that he based his entire identity on, fell into despair, made Kenjo feel like his entire existence and worldview was meaningless. It honestly seems like a much worse fate than just thinking that these beliefs still hold merit, but realizing that he fell from grace and became a criminal. I'm curious to hear what you guys think though, do you think this execution is a worse fate, or do you think what actually happened in the game is a worse fate? Let me know in the comments below. Number three is Teruya Oteri's execution, Genuine Luxury Golden Box. Teruya gets pulled away by chains and enters a room that says, do not approach. There is a terrifying noise from the inside, then the screen blacks out. A little while later, the lights turn on and reveal the place to be an auction house. The moderator, Monokuma, introduces the first good, and the consumers buy the goods by yelling out the prices. The goods are inside a box with a question mark, and after the sixth and final good is sold, the successful bidders open the box as if to boast their goods. Inside each of the six boxes is Oteri's head, body, both arms, and both legs, cleanly packaged and sealed. I audibly gasped when I first read this execution. His death happens immediately and off screen, but it's still so unbelievably haunting. It's obviously an absurdly cruel way to kill somebody, but I also think the fact that Otri Mart was funding these executions adds to like the dementedness of it. Like I can just imagine on the auction stage, it would say something like, sponsored by Otri Mart. And us as the players would think Monokuma is just like screwing around. But later we'd learn that no, yeah, his father's business literally funded his son's gruesome murder. And if you guys remember, Teruya and his father were extremely close. His dad was the person that Teruya looked up to the most, and his father being unknowingly responsible for this is just so unnerving and tragic. But on the other hand, can you imagine Teruya's reaction if Monokuma revealed his father's involvement with the death game right before his execution? That would be so freaking intense. Not just for him, but I'm sure the other students would be super unnerved as well, wondering what awaits them outside of the killing game, knowing such a big company is sponsoring this. Another thing that I think makes this execution just beyond creepy is imagining that instead of Monokuma's in the audience, there are Otri Mart employees. It just gives me chills, like his father's employees bidding and collecting Teruya's body parts, like, oh, it's just so messed up. But yeah, this one just seriously messes me up, and that's why I had to rank it so high. Next up is Rei Makaru's execution, Punishment Classroom. Inside a lecture hall filled with Monokuma students, Makaru starts the class on the platform with a pale face. Every time the Monokumas fall asleep or do something else in the middle of the class, a chalk from a chalk dispenser under the blackboard flies out like a bullet to the Monokumas and kills them. One by one, the Monokumas slowly start to disappear, and Makaru sees her parents in the parent observation 
seat after all the Monokumas have been killed. When Makaru takes her mind off the class for a second, the chalk is fired, piercing both Makaru and her parents, destroying the classroom pillar and making the entire classroom fall down. In the rubble of the classroom, only Makaru's arms from underneath the rubble show that her body is buried there. This is the execution that utilizes childhood trauma the most to bring despair, and boy does Rei have a lot of childhood trauma to work with. In her free time events, you learn that when she was a child, her parents' business went bankrupt. They lost all their money and were forced to live on the streets. In order to give Rei a better life, they decided to entrust her to a relative, but this relative betrayed their trust, leaving poor five-year-old Rei on her own. She believed that her parents abandoned her and vowed that she would be completely different from them. She decided to work as hard as she possibly could to become successful, to the point that she practically exploited herself, stating that she never took any time to rest. The reason she looks down on the other students is because she believes that none of them have had to persevere like she has. In this execution, she's forced to teach the Monokuma students without taking a second to rest. The moment she does, she'll be shot to death with the chalk-like bullet. The Monokuma students represent the type of people that she looks down on, slackers who don't fully dedicate themselves to succeeding. Once they slack off, they're shot, showing their worthlessness. Rei, on the other hand, is different from them, though. As they continue to slack off and die one by one, Rei perseveres and continues teaching. Just like how she succeeds through life, she perseveres through this execution, teaching diligently without losing focus. It isn't until she sees her parents that she takes her mind off of her job for just a second, and she's killed for this, along with them as well. Rei felt that if she stopped achieving and working for even a second, her life would be over, and she would be a failure just like her parents and Monokuma brought that idea to life with this execution. Her dying right when she sees her parents is just so tragic too. Regardless of how she feels towards them, I'm sure she has a lot to say and has imagined facing them for quite some time. And then, of course, as the player, knowing that she's so close to being able to talk to them and clear up the misunderstandings and finally be able to become a family again is just so sad. Like she's so close to that perfect family that she's been dreaming of for so long and Monokuma takes it away. But yeah, this execution just feels like a gut punch to me and that's what I look for in executions, which is why I ranked it at number two. Number one on this list is Akane Tyra's execution, Please Order a Smile. The location is a maid cafe. The chains on her arms and legs move Tyra against her will. Monokumas, who are dressed as customers, start to order, and the chains bend her in physically impossible poses in order to serve the Monokumas their dishes. The last Monokuma customer orders a smile, and Tyra, with all her joints snapped, makes a forced smile as the chains wrap around her and kill her. This execution is so simple, yet so messed up and disturbing. It has to be the most agonizing death you could possibly come up with while still making it made themed and although the concept is simple I feel like there's a lot of thought put into the symbolism behind it Akani's parents died when she was still a baby and she was forced to grow up living in an abusive orphanage the way Lanouge describes it makes it sound unbearably horrible after enduring this for some time eventually she met Utsuro who saved her from this and after this she decided to dedicate her life to him as a servant only carrying out Utsuro aka her master's demands her relationship with Utsuro is pretty simple similar to her talent as the ultimate maid. As the ultimate maid, she's meant to serve her master and only carry out their wishes. I think this similarity was made on purpose, considering the fact that she refers to both Utsuro and her employers as master. I think this was done to show like how pitiable the life Akane has lived. Because of her childhood and profession, she's never been given the opportunity to find herself and do what she wants. She's always been forced to follow her master's commands, whether that be her master as her employer or her master Utsuro. I think this execution serves as a parallel to her life, more specifically her unwavering loyalty to Utsuro. She's willing to break her bones and suffer any amount of pain for her master Master, and although she fakes a smile while she does it, she's slowly killing herself by carrying out these orders. I'm so glad that Akane was able to receive some redemption at the end of the game and ended up acting in her own interest to protect the surviving students. It would have been really sad if she lived her entire life like this execution, only doing what her master requests of her. I can't imagine the despair she would feel going through this execution if she manages to realize that this is the exact way she's lived her entire miserable life 
and now she's forced to die in the same pitiable way. But yeah, I really love this execution. It's simple, but it really does a great job, in my opinion, of fully encapsulating Akane as a character, her personality, her backstory, and her talent. And it also gives you like that gut punch feeling that I look for in these executions. But yeah, this will conclude the video. Let me know what you guys think. Which execution was your favorite? Do you guys agree or disagree with my list? I'd love to hear your opinions in the comment section below. Please do leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you did enjoy this video and if you would like for me to make more Danganronpa and other content. But yeah, once again, thanks guys for watching the video and I will see you real soon.